What is up amigos? Today we're talking about the effects of a moving ground on a car's aerodynamics. So what does this refer to? Well, we know that a car drives along and then there'll be a free stream flow hitting it because of its movement. And relative to the car, the ground that this is on will be moving. So in reality, the ground doesn't move. We know it's uh, our reference frame is the ground and the car moves around relative to that. But when it comes to the design process of a car, particularly the aerodynamics, a lot of that happens in a wind tunnel. And to begin with, back in the early 90s and before that, they used to put cars into a wind tunnel without a moving ground. So you just put a car in, or well, what they did was they put the car in, they sometimes elevated the car a little bit so that the wheels were off the ground and they spun the wheels um, without the ground moving, but usually the wheels were just on the ground and nothing was moving underneath the car. And the flow would come along here from the upstream section of the wind tunnel, and we would get boundary layers forming over this ground as the flow comes along here. And that means that the aerodynamics of the car is now different. And after about the early 90s, a lot of testing was done up in, with regards to the effects of the moving ground on cars aerodynamics, and we're going through that as well, what these effects are. But to begin with, let's talk about what happens when the ground is not moving. So unlike a regular car on the road, there is no boundary layer forming over the ground. But for a wind tunnel without a moving ground, there is a boundary layer forming. And this is very important for the underbody section of the car and the wheels. So first of all, when the wheels are not rotating, right there, we get a very different flow physics. When the wheels are rotating, usually there's more flow being pushed down and the stagnation points move down a little bit. That changes the strength of the jetting vortices, which are the vortices around the bottom of the wheels that occur because flow comes down. It has to go somewhere. It can't go underneath, really. There's only a little bit that can go underneath in the little longitudinal grooves that connect the front to the back, but most of it has to go around the side and that then rolls up into these vortices that go downstream. So the rotating wheels are not occurring, so those aerodynamics are different there as well. But then we also have the regular underbody. So first of all, we have, back in the pre-9, uh, before the early 90s and, and before that, the underbodies were usually quite rough. So the flow going along here would change in terms of the aerodynamics. So if you have some exposed sections here and the flow is coming along here, and we have a boundary layer here, which is looking like that, the profile. And if you don't know what boundary layers, check out this video here. That is then going to interact with the underbody quite differently. But regardless, even if there is a rough underbody or not a rough underbody, when you get to the rear here in the diffuser, the diffuser will definitely act very differently because the flow here, again, there's a very big boundary layer forming, and it has a very different amount of energy so it can't stay attached nearly as well over this diffuser and usually you'll get more separation over this which means that you get a greater rate a greater wake sorry and the recirculation zone around here is different it's usually moved down and usually bigger so that is all because the ground is not is not moving and it should be moving so if we were to make the ground moving we would then alleviate this boundary layer velocity between the moving ground and the friction flow should be zero because they should be moving at the same velocity. So if that's even better. Now, what are some ways that we can make the ground moving? Well, the first way is if we look from on top, let's say, so now we're looking down, we can just put a massive rolling road here. So we have usually a, a steel sheet or a plastic sheet that rotates around, goes underneath the wind tunnel, rotates back around and comes back up. And there are usually two rollers, one on here, one on here. Sometimes a third roller underneath to then tension the belt, but not necessarily. And then you have the car situated on here. And usually you want the car to be about 0 0.5 to 1 meter. Uh, downstream of the leading edge of the belt and about 0 0.5 to 1 meter uh, upstream from the end of the leading belt uh, of the belt so that the flow hitting the car can develop properly. So that is the best situation here where we have just a massive belt that the car goes on. We then usually mount the car from the top with a sting that comes down onto it and supports it somewhere around here. Then each of the four wheels has a sting coming along here and then we can measure the forces on there. Alternatively, we can sometimes get rid of these things and have the entire car just sitting on here. And then underneath the moving belt, we have um, load cells, which are as a cushion of air between the wheel, the belt, and then the load cell. And then through that cushion, cushion of air, we get that force being transmitted for each wheel. And we can measure the forces on the wheel. 
that is the best case scenario. Then we have other cases where we have a three belt system, where again, looking on top, we have one belt in the middle. Then we have another thinner belt to the side and another thinner belt to the side here. So this middle bit, that's where the most of the car goes over, but then the wheels come here and the side of the car is here, here, and then the other wheels here and the side of the car here. So we replicate the flow that way. And this is a, it is almost as good as one big moving belt, but it's a bit easier to do in terms of practically. Then we go into much worse moving situations and they're still much better than not having a moving belt at all, but not as good as having one big belt or a three belt system. We have um, a regular, very common one is you have one big belt in the middle that goes underneath the uh, in middle of the car. Then you have these little, what's called wheel drive units, which are little conveyor belts that each wheel sits on. And then between these conveyor belts, these wheel drive units, there's nothing, there's no moving ground. And also upstream of them, there's no moving ground. So the sides of the car and the front of the car on the sides are not having this moving ground uh, flow physics occurring. So that is pretty good, but again, not as good as these situations. Then you have additional ones where you have, for example, um, the moving belt in the middle, and then you can have a T-belt system. So you have a big one at the front, and then you have potentially wheel drive units here as well, if you want. So then at least the front of the car, the sides, is seeing the moving ground uh, boundary condition, but then the sides and the back sides are not. So again, these ones, as we go along, get less and less accurate compared to the gold standard. But overall, the in terms of the effects on the drag coefficient, uh, because the effects on the flow physics is so varied, there's really not just a way of saying, okay, if you don't have a moving ground system, that's going to result in this amount of drag increase or this amount of drag reduction. It really depends on the car. So generally speaking, we might say it's around a 15 to 20 count increase if we don't have a moving belt system, if we have a fixed road. But again, that does change a little bit here and there based on the car itself. So that is the moving ground aerodynamics of a car and different systems to get around that. One last thing I should actually say is with these wheel drive units, they're often quite accurate when you can't, when it comes to measuring the force on wheels because you can put a load cell underneath each wheel drive unit and measure the force on each wheel. So that is an advantage of that as well, as well as being much simpler and much cheaper than the massive situation here. So that is in this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. And we'll see you on. Peace, amigos.